Well, welcome to St Nicholas Church up here in Checkley for this service for the second Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may so always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them, although the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. 
Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This whole business with Thomas, or doubting Thomas as he's come down to us, is an instructive one because I think rather than showing us somebody who is weak in the faith, actually the passage shows us somebody who wishes their faith to be strong and standing on solid ground. He is somebody who takes his faith seriously. He is somebody who knows that it's not simply believe, simply believing six impossible things before breakfast, but rather faith is something which has a solid foundation indeed. You see, the issue at hand is not does Thomas believe or not believe. The issue at hand is what is the basis of Thomas's belief? Thomas through the providence of God, was not with the other disciples when Jesus appeared to them. And for Thomas, it wasn't simply enough that he should have a second-hand experience of the risen Christ. It's not that he would rely upon the speech of others reporting what they had seen. Thomas rather wanted to know for himself what had happened. And so it is that we find that eight days later that Jesus again appears to the twelve. Again, he repeats the formula, peace be with you. And because he knows what is in Thomas's heart, he turns to Thomas and says, put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Jesus didn't rebuke Thomas for his action. Jesus rather wanted to give Thomas the proof that Thomas needed. He knew what Thomas had said. Thomas said, well, I want to put my finger in the holes. I just want to know and to be able to see beyond all doubt. He knew what was in Thomas's heart, and so he made that offer. But the vision of Jesus, the fact that Jesus was there in front of him, that was enough for Thomas. And Thomas answered with what is the first confession of Jesus' divinity explicitly there in the Gospels? Jesus answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus replied, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So Thomas makes his great confession. This confession, my Lord and my God, this confession that Jesus is our Lord and our God, that is the confession which stands right at the core, right at the heart of the Christian faith. That is the confession with which John greeted Jesus. But Jesus goes on with an interesting comment. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Who are these people who have not seen and yet have believed? Well, the answer is simply that if you have turned to Christ, if you have accepted Christ, if you can join with John and say of Jesus, my Lord and my God, well, you are in that number. After all, we find that the gospel continues. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The point of the gospel, the reason why this was written in the very first place, was to help you to believe. It was to help you to encounter Christ as the disciples encountered Christ. But you might still be thinking to yourself, this is all very well and good. It was fine for the likes of John. Jesus was there physically in front of him. What have I got to go on? Well, if that's what's in your mind, and I wouldn't blame you if it is, why not? You too want solid ground for something you're going to place your faith in. Well, let me suggest to you this way of putting that faith to the test. Let me suggest to you that you actually do that. Let me suggest to you that you turn to God in prayer. Let me suggest to you that you read the words of Christ and the rest of the words which are in your Bibles and put them into practice. Let me suggest to you that you start living as if God is an ever-present reality in your life and then you will know because you will encounter 
Christ. That's the test. That's the way of putting all of this to the test. That is the way for yourself that you can do the equivalent of putting your fingers in Jesus' wounds. This is the way that you can say to Christ, I'm going to put this to the test. I'm going to live in accordance with what you tell me. And it is my promise to you that if you do that, then you will encounter Christ and you will find your faith is built on solid rock indeed. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, let us pray. We pray for the Church of God. We pray for all those who lead the Church. And we particularly pray for ourselves as we make up your Church. Father, we pray that you'd strengthen us as we seek to witness to the world around us. We pray for all those who, like Thomas, are seeking firm footing for their faith. We pray that you would be present to them. We pray that they would meet with you and through that meeting would come away with full assurance of their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. We pray for all who guide and lead them. We pray for those who seek to build peace between nations and within nations. We pray particularly for those in authority over us we pray that you'd grant them wisdom and that they may walk in righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the parishes where we live. We pray for our friends, our families and our neighbours. We pray for those who seek to serve their local community and pray that you would grant success to their endeavours. And we pray for ourselves that we may be sold to light in the communities in which you have placed us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before you, Lord, those who are sick or anxious, those for whom we've been asked to pray, those who are weighing on us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember those who have died, and we pray for those who mourn them. Lord, we pray, be thou their strength and their comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord, alleluia. And the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. I cannot tell why he whom angels worshipped should set his love upon the sons of men. Or why a shepherd 
that he should seek the wanderers. To bring them back, they know not how or where. But this I know, that he was born of Mary. When Bethlehem's manger was his only home, and that he lived at Nazareth and labored, and so the Saviour, Saviour of the world is come. I cannot tell how silently he suffered, as with his peace he graced this place of tears, or how his heart upon the cross was broken, the crown of pain to three and thirty years. But this I know, he heals the broken hearted, and stays our sin, and calms our lurking fear, and lifts the burden from the heavy laden, for yet the Saviour, Saviour of the tell how he will win the nations, how he will claim his earthly heritage, how satisfy the needs and aspirations of beast and west, of sinner and of sin. This I know, all flesh shall see his glory, and he shall reap the harvest he has sown, and some glad day his sun shall shine in splendor, when he the Saviour, Saviour of the tell how all the land shall worship, when at his bidding every storm is stilled. All who can say how great the jubilation, when all the hearts of men with love are filled. I know the skies will thrill with rapture, and myriad, myriad human voices sing, and earth to heaven and heaven to earth will answer, at last the Saviour, Saviour of Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. 
so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. But chiefly are we bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead, for he is the true paschal lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Saint Nicholas and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Each and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. And the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit 
to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me Oh, 
God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.